Up until now, people have often thought about robots totally replacing people, um, but now we realise robots can actually assist people as well. It might add more power to what they're doing, it might help them do a little repetitive task that they wouldn't like to do, um, but it's all about uh, assisting people do their job uh, more efficiently. Environmental robotics covers three main areas. One's the underwater, with the Starbug autonomous underwater vehicle, the ground robots, such as this one here, and also our aerial robots. We develop systems that don't require pilots. With all unmanned aircraft systems, there are basically three problems you have to solve. Um, you need to navigate the robot, you have to guide the robot, and you need at the lower level um, control the robot. It can be used um, for all type of um, low altitude remote sensing tasks. So if you can get closer, to objects of interest gives you lots of advantages. The hexapod robots that we've been working on, they've got these servos that provide you with sensory input. It's important to uh, know what sort of ground you're traversing on so that the legged robot can adapt to that. So we have a project called Mobile Telepresence and it's about using a, a robot to move around a effectively a video conferencing system using high-speed broadband, that's a kind of crucial element to this, beam back pictures and audio to people in remote locations. So we have an example uh, in a museum where students in remote parts of Australia can actually tour the museum because there's a robot in the museum and the museum educator, who's a human, takes the robot around and actually speaks and interacts with the students who are remote. And we can use similar technology for training in industry or maybe uh, healthcare uh, and actually train people uh, remotely without them having to come into the place where the training is taking place. So this is the Starbug underwater vehicle and you can actually autonomously uh, navigate over the seabed very close range, less than a metre, taking high resolution photos of the environment so that our scientists can then use this data to understand the way things are growing, uh, the effects of floods, cyclones, that type of thing. When we collect large volumes of data, there's a couple of challenges. One is to be able to interpret that data and con um, condense it down to a, a piece of knowledge that we can actually use. So part of the role as roboticists is to not only develop the platforms and collect the data, but also to be able to process this data and interpret into different maps or different levels of um, knowledge. We don't really have the capabilities yet to do a robot that can solve all problems, but maybe we will soon. Oh, my God.